All of these designs are of weapons. The artists were tasked with creating new prosthetic tools for Sekiro to use. One thing that's important to remember is that all of these designs were created before Sekiro was released, so they're all extremely original. This, for example, is Isleth, and it's riddled with demons, but you can still see the traces of their civilization, you know, in its heyday, as Gwyn and Gwyndolin walk through this place to meet with the mother of chaos herself. This is such an imaginative piece. Jugo, which is a place that we don't get to see in Dark Souls, but has been rendered here as this giant ant infested, arid wasteland with these almost horrific towers that are actually um, abandoned ant mounds. haven't accidentally clicked on a Vadi Vidya art video. What you have clicked on is the results of my recent obsession over the last couple months. AI generated art. Genuinely beautiful art that was created by a machine. This machine was raised on a database of images with text descriptors and then I came along and fed it nothing but prompts for some of my favorite titles, the Souls games like a dad forcing his kid to eat creamed corn every Thursday. And I gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed with the results. I made hundreds of Dark Souls concept images and I will demonstrate how you can as well. Allow me to show you how an AI imagines some of the most visually striking worlds in modern gaming. A few months ago in my D&D server, one of my campaign buddies drops this image. Wait shit, not that one. This image. And says, and I quote, used AI to generate my character. Shit bussin'. He then proceeds to drop this cutie paladin he already prepped as his backup character since Carl, his gnome artificer that he currently plays, has been infected with slot eggs and we are deep underground so he knows he is basically fucked. It's not activated, it just is a, a wall. Pull the lever. I'll pull the lever. Um, Carl, as you uh, walk closer to inspect it, you see two creatures appear on either side of you uh, breaking the invisibility that are on top of them. What are they doing? They just stand around all day invisible? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they look like massive demonic toad-like creatures. Oh God, and shit. each wield a great sword. Are they evil? Uh, you don't have a chance to ask as they swing their great swords at you. Uh, one will point his sword uh, to the door and an orange bead flies out. Uh -oh. What? And when, it reaches, and when it reaches the middle of the doorway, uh, it explodes into a fireball. Oh boy! He's fireballing himself. Uh, it actually does not hit them because they are twenty-five feet away from the door frame, whereas everyone else is twenty feet from the door frame. Am I? Uh, yes. <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> because how? of how, because of how we rule like the double diagonals, <laughs> they are twenty-five <laughs> feet away, and you're twenty. <laughs> what the fuck? So they're 25 and you're 20. What the fuck? <laughs> and then the one that did not fireball uh, will attack you, Carl. 12 seconds later. And then you you guys see the slad lift Carl's body up on his sword before throwing it onto the ground. He needs a nap. He needs some milk. Not only that, he has generated a few settings and some other miscellaneous images. Pretty soon, he's making all of our character tokens from our campaign. Now at this point, we were all like, what the fuck is this, Dolly? Since it was at the height of those memes. And he says, nah, Midjourney. Midjourney is an image generating AI that has recently entered open beta. From what I can tell, it does landscapes, portraits, and abstract images very well. If you want to be absolutely stunned at what this can do, the community feed is jaw-dropping. 
And if you want to try this out for yourself, go to the Midjourney Discord, find an open channel, and type slash imagine, followed by the prompt. You get quite a few free images to generate and upscale as a free trial, after which you will have to pay like 10 bucks a month for more or 30 bucks a month for basically unlimited. If you pay for it like I did, you can just DM the bot, but your shit will still get posted to the community feed, so try not to make anything too bizarre. Afterwards, it'll give you four images to which you can choose to either upscale, generate four more variants, or refresh the previous prompt. You can also do things like specify image dimensions, aspect ratio, and even provide reference images and tell it how much weight to give to the reference images. There is an entire meta out there already of what tags and words to use to try and get it to do what you want. You can go look at some images on the feed and see what tags they used. Tags like 8K Octane Render and ArtStation are pretty common. Just maybe don't look at the tags for all the artwork of the hot chicks, unless you want to feel like a slime ball. You can even tell it what art style to emulate, which may be the coolest thing about it. For example, I quite enjoy paintings by artists like Goya and self-portraits done by people suffering from mental illnesses, such as Alzheimer's, dementia, and schizophrenia. These make for some of the most powerful works of art that I have ever seen. So I prompted the bot with Dark Souls character portrait in the style of an artist with a mental illness, and this was the result. Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Maybe the bot needs a little tweaking still. Here are some examples of prompts that I used. This one's a personal favorite of mine. The prompt was G9 real face. Even the AI knows the one true ape king, I guess. And I think I accidentally created an NFT with this one. Now this process can be a little tricky if you are trying to make something specific rather than just getting the AI to generate concept art or ideas for you. Sometimes you can get some very unintended results. For example, the prompt minion from Despicable Me choking out Macho Man Randy Savage instead produced this absolute abomination that is the Macho Minion. Here's another one. Asking for Scarlet Aeonia Blooms or Star Scourge Radon gave me these results. That one in the top right corner looks like the hottest new prog stoner album of the year. Wait a minute. Lupine Ossuary, Coyote Bones and Canyon, Doom Metal, Stoner Metal album cover. Get the most fucked up free death metal font generator and boom. My very own debut do metal album. Here are some of the rejects from that as well. This one you may recognize as my channel banner. I've actually used this to generate hundreds of profile pictures currently. No clue what I'm going to do with them yet, but I'm sure I'll find a use for them somewhere. I just keep remixing the prompts with stuff like Wolf Skull in the style of Junji Ito Manga Sketch or Wolf Skull in the style of Voodoo Sugar Skull 3D Render. I am so addicted to this, seriously, I could do it all day. Now I know what you're thinking. With the amount of applications an AI such as this has, isn't this bad for artists? And the answer is, yeah, probably. To be honest, I don't really know. On one hand, you can use this to pump out so many images faster than even the furry commission community can keep up with generating concept art and maybe someday generating entire ads. On the other hand, you have artists using it to get inspiration themselves, offloading the repetition of trial and error, or even taking different elements from generated images and stitching them together, or using lyrics from music as prompts to generate entire music videos. There's no getting around it. This is genuinely beautiful art created from scratch by a bot. It's very interesting right now, but what happens when the funniest comedian in the world is an AI that's been fed every stand-up routine since the Renaissance? So I says, Super Collider, I just met her. 
Now, albeit you usually won't get results this good without rerolling prompts for a very long time, upscaling, re-upscaling, or just getting lucky. But still, like damn, just look at this stuff. I am going to casually sidestep this highly nuanced and polarizing topic as I am not about to get in the middle of that shit with some of my friends being artists. Although I'm always down to fuck it out and argue about it in the comments since it's such an interesting topic. All I know is that you really shouldn't even call it your own art, let alone claim it as yours. Kind of like this. Hello my fellow hunters, I have been playing Bloodborne again lately as my 6 year old daughter watches on in wide eyed fascination. Today she wanted to draw her favorite boss Lady Maria for me, just thought I'd share with y'all. She makes me so proud. Okay, we'll see how that social experiment pans out. In the meantime, let's check out some other subreddits because once you start to get an eye for this shit, you will start noticing it everywhere. r slash creepy is absolutely full of this shit. I think it's time that we check in on our post, see how it's doing. And we got banned. I guess I've spent so much time editing this video that people are actually catching on to this AI art stuff now. How stupid do you think we are? Fucking Van Gogh couldn't have drawn that at six. Not to mention this art is clearly AI generated, so it's not even your talent you're masquerading as your kids. Foul beast. Hey, I told my daughter what you think of her last work, so she drew you this. And attach image. I got the AI to make me a middle finger in the style of Banksy. Okay, well, moving along. I've even seen this in thumbnails and as green screen backgrounds for YouTubers. For my purposes, what I wanted to do was test this AI and see just what exactly it thinks of the worlds of Yarnum, Lordran, Drang Lake, Lothric, the lands between, and Japan look like. So sorry for holding out on you, but let's now take a look at the concept art that it conjured. First stop, Yarnum. I'm just going to let these images play and I'll talk a bit about some of them as we go along. So if you're too cheap to buy Vadi's art book then sit back, relax and feast your eyes. Now I'm not sure what database they trained the bot on but they sure as hell didn't feed it too much Souls game concept art. For nearly all of these in order to reverse engineer what I wanted I had to describe it as generically as possible. For example instead of prompting it with Yarnum pre moon transition height of the hunt. I would instead say werewolves roaming London beneath the full moon, or instead of Melania I would say redheaded Valkyrie amputee war criminal with stone skin cancer, art station AK render. Just something to keep in mind for you when you're looking at these images as I'm going to be giving them arbitrary titles that I was aiming for. Kind of like when a YouTuber comes up with a clickbait name for a video and then makes the video afterwards to fit the title. You can see here that the bot has a really hard time making faces unless you specifically request a portrait. It's a bit of an art form all into itself just trying to coax the AI into refining images to the point that they would be indistinguishable from human art. It's usually easiest to do a character portrait and the landscape separate and then just composite them together yourself. We can even give the bot more free reign if we want and just give it an abstract prompt, such as simply typing the hunter's nightmare as this can often give you some pretty amazing results too. Let's kick things off with the abyss watchers, once again showcasing how much the bot can struggle with humanoid forms and faces. This one of Ariandel Rope Ridge is one of my favorites. All of my Lothric castles turned out quite abstract as did the Demon Princes, but I actually love these ones too. Once I saw the options for Dreadkeep I knew I had to try and upscale all of them. This was my failed attempt at a fat wing knight. He looks like someone chopped him in half. The firekeeper turned out pretty well though. Now these were great. The only thing I prompted the bot with was fire for Ariandel and soul of cinder the fire fades and the results looked like they would be from a concept art book for DS3. And I would be remiss if we didn't try Lothric Castle again, this time under the solar eclipse at the end of the world.
god I love Sekiro. This game has one of the best looking settings in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I know, the Japanese aesthetic is done to death, but damn, the color palettes and the ambience of the areas just never fail to put me at ease. A lot of the Sekiro images turned out to be the most abstract, as you can see by these images of Demon of Hatred, Divine Dragon, and Guardian 8. To remedy this, I decided to prompt the AI with specific styles such as Sekiro Deathblow Tooltip in the style of Kuniyoshi Ukiyo-e Woodblock Print, or Sekiro Shinobi Prosthetic in the style of Detailed Blueprint Sketch with Labels. Tempo Temple is also such a fantastic looking area. I'm a real sucker for fall colors. Now I know that you guys know that I have a pretty bad relationship with Dark Souls 2. But I am man enough to admit that it had one of the nicest looking and memorable settings in the entire Souls trilogy, and that is well reflected in these images I think. Shrine of Amana and Heidi's Tower are standouts to me, and as much as I absolutely loathe Iron Keep, a castle built inside of a volcano crater is a pretty dope setting. Say what you will about Kaled, but damn is that one of the most interesting looking areas that I have seen in a while. It definitely looks like a wasteland, but unfortunately the word tryptophobia is a banned tag word for some reason. Fucking Lamau. I also decided to try out Elden Ring as a retro sci-fi movie poster. These Erd Tree images were super cool while still being quite abstract. I like the theme of the branching extending and covering the entire land to symbolize the Erd Tree's influence over everything. The primeval sorcerers also have never looked so trippy. For the Melania portraits, it looks like the bot was trying to sneak a little Samus Aran in there. Excellent taste. I kind of gave up on the Melina portrait since I couldn't get the eye sewn shut. Kind of wish I continued though. Why does Patches look like he's been cast as the guy who plays Tywin Lannister? I wonder who could even play him in the live action, Jason Statham? Oh god, go back. And finally, one of my absolute favorites, the Academy of Raya Lucaria. I'm sure the one thing people will remember most about Dark Souls is the world. I was pretty pleased that the AI seemed to have a good idea of what the iconic Firelink Shrine looked like just from prompting Firelink Shrine from Dark Souls 1. These Bed of Chaos images in the style of artist Lori Greasley turned out spectacularly. Speaking of emulating an art style, the other controversy is that can an artist blacklist their name from AI bots like this if people are just generating versions of their art? 
But the counter argument would be, could you even copyright a style of art? Does that belong to you? Again, really touchy subjects, we're not going to get too deep into it, just some questions for you to think about. I also tried to make a vertical map of Lordran that you might see in a concept art book. The rest of these images honestly speak for themselves, I'll let you enjoy them. I hope you've enjoyed these images and I'm curious to see what you all can come up with as well. I've been adding the Midjourney bot to various friends discords and it's been a lot of fun to see what other people's creative prompts can do. The worlds of Soulsborne games are truly legendary and memorable, but I think with AI art generation being another tool for concept artists, we may have a ways to go yet before we find the greatest setting of any video game. Let me know of any other practical uses an AI image generator might have if you think I missed any. I'll be adding a link to my mid-journey feed if you're curious as to what else I've cooked up. I will also be adding the images shown in this video to an Imgur library if you happen to want any of these for your own purposes. All images made by the bot are public after all. If you want to see more AI art content then do not subscribe to me because I really fucking doubt I'm going to do another video on this, but you may see me incorporate AI art into my videos from time to time somehow. If you like souls, me, or just these kinds of videos however, I appreciate the subs and likes because seeing numbers go up make me happy and want me to make more video. I know this was a bit of a weird one for me, but I got carried away and I ended up generating hundreds of images within weeks so I had to find some use for them. At least this way I could share them with you all and hopefully pique your interest a little. Maybe you're looking for inspiration, maybe you have an idea that you could never commit to paper on your own, or maybe you just want to kill an afternoon and see a picture of fat Santa Claus in swimwear on a beach in Cancun. Whatever it is, mid-journey and AI art in general may just be the tool you never knew you needed. Take care guys.